r slash ask reddit dnd players what have been some of your favorite moments in a campaign as a ln wizard convincing the rest of the party to willfully pay local taxes on our loot we had a game devolve into figuring out the cost of salt and then they realized it would be more lucrative to mine and ship salt than adventure my players are pragmatic that's just a great opportunity for them to defend shipping lanes defend assaults on the mine and engage in corporate espionage against rival traders adventure on I was playing a druid, and wound up missing a session. When I returned, my beloved forest had been burned to the ground, which sent me into a rage while I inflicted vengeance upon the orcs who did it. The DM even gave me bonus stats in my berserk state. The party decided to not tell me that they'd actually been the ones to start the fire. It's funny, I'm also a druid and something similar happened to me. I have a tree named Cedric that's been in our family for many generations. One time, after having a fight with one of my party members, I went back to my hometown only to find Cedric hacked to bits by some enemies and my mother yelling at me that it was all my fault for going adventuring and leaving my family. They had saved a tiny bit of Cedric and started regrowing him, Wally style. I had recently gained access to both plant growth and speak with plants, so the next day I prepared these. First I cast plant growth. I have the guidance cantrip, so I used that on my roll, which gave me an extra d4. Somehow, I rolled a 20 and a 4. Cedric sprang from a tiny twig back to about half the size he used to be. Then I cast speak with plants and got to have a long conversation with Cedric where he gave me some advice about life and talked me into going back to my party. My family was super impressed because no one had been able to cast a level 3 spell in our family in many generations and Cedric had been very lonely. My mother apologized and I went back to adventuring. It was a very sweet role playing session. When we used an illusion to make the ropes we tied a bandit up with to look like snakes and convinced him that he had come down with a bad case of the snakes. We cured him in exchange for information, and fear of coming down with the snakes spread throughout the countryside. First game of D&D I ever played was with my friend, her brother, and with my dad as a dungeon master. We had to kill a dude who was running a snake farm. The snake farmer kept telling me, it's a wealthy enterprise, snake farming. When I asked why, I'm the only one doing it. This happened in my most recent campaign, our druid has a baleful polymorph spell that can turn one enemy into a frog permanently if they fail a save. He's used it on every big bad evil guy and every time the DM rolled a critical failure rendering the entire plot and build up to nothing more than squishing a useless amphibian. It would be more fun to keep them in a proper habitat with their original names. This guy gets it. But, if something happened at some point, they all might return to their natural selves. Good luck with that. Okay I have two. Last spring my friend ran a Pathfinder campaign, and at one point we were gearing up for a big fight against a werewolf. Before this we kind of just slid by on dumb luck and sometimes me setting things on fire. So we're freaking out and our swashbuckler just starts talking to the werewolf. A few rolls later and the werewolf just got so annoyed that he up and left. The second comes from a campaign my boyfriend runs. This past Monday, one of his players decided to rob an apothecary. He never cased the place. This dude wasn't a rogue. The place didn't have any window so he decided to go down the chimney, grab his things, and get back out. As a normal sized human does while scaling a chimney, he got stuck. So, he bangs a potion against a wall took explosive damage and now he's on fire. So, he's freaking out and breaks another. There's another explosion and now he's covered in acid. So he picks one of the potions and drinks it, gains back some health, then takes acid damage. He drinks one of the other potions before remembering he has water in his pack. 
So he puts out the fire and washes off the acid, but he's still stuck. He decides, hmm. Maybe I'll bang my head against the wall to try to get out. Takes damage. Time for death saving throws. Crit fail. This 10th level character died alone in a chimney, half melted. I was a bard. My team of people and I were sailing to an island when out of nowhere, a loud noise alerted everyone. A giant kraken emerged from the water, menacing and ready to kill. I rolled the lowest initiative. The first turn my team prepared spells, readied their bows, and prepared to fight as the kraken approached our vessel slowly. And then it was my turn. Since I was last to go and so far away, I decided to distract the kraken. I said hey kraken look at this, and proceeded to do the cheap magic trick of pretending to pull my thumb off. The kraken froze and looked at amazement. I continued my trick and we sailed past, and then my DM and everyone busted out laughing. He tried to set up this epic battle, but it turned into a joke. The kraken rolled a one. One of the first rules of D&D, never get on a ship. Dang, two of my unfinished campaigns ended by getting on a ship. You might be onto something here. Does it have to be D&D? I ran a Chtulhu game where I did a pre-game to teach everyone the rules and as a general warm-up. I pre-generated the characters for everyone. They were idiot cultists out to steal an artifact for their masters. The players came up with an elaborate heist, managed to get the artifact, and return it. When the real game started the characters were mostly investigators and their case. Solving the crime they committed with their other characters. It was great pointing out how sloppy their heist plan was. There were cameras everywhere, witnesses, fingerprints, etc. Of course the cult leader turned them all into zombie minions so they even had to fight their former selves at one point. It was a nice surprise for the players and a lot of fun. Group Scoundrel wanted to permanently silence a public critic of the group's methods for saving the town decided to give him a moral test when he snuck into the man's house, so I gave him a wife and newborn baby, thinking it might make him rethink things. Does he think about the lives he'd ruined by murdering this man and sneak back out? Nope. Kills the wife, kills the man, abducts the baby, steals a horse, rides four hours into the desert, drops the baby into a ravine, and then makes it back to his friends without anybody knowing what happened. You should have a follow-up scenario years in the future where the baby survived and is seeking revenge. You joke, but that's why he said he threw it in the ravine and didn't just kill it. If he survives, he'll be a total badass and want revenge. Nothing quite like a tragic backstory to make babies stronger. I ran a game with a bunch of friends who never played Dungeons and Dragons before. Some had to leave because they moved but I added in new players to keep the party at around the same amount of people. Going from levels 1 through 7, the party had beaten everything that had stood in their way. At level 8, they were exploring some ancient ruins and finally got to the boss fight, a clay golem. Without specialized weapons, they're difficult to damage so the party slowly withered it down when the golem out of nowhere got a crit on a very low health party member. They went from okay to dead. And that's when one of the players turned to me, with big bright eyes of horrific recognition. You can die. It was a beautiful moment. Meng my first campaign to a bunch of friends who had also never DND'd before. In the context of the adventure, they were basically being invaded by slightly technologically superior enemies, who used pump action crossbows which gave them an extra attack at a minus 5 penalty. First round of combat, enemy wins initiative. Not having a screen, I roll the attack die in front of everyone. Nat 1. I chuckle, and roll again to confirm the critical failure. Nat 1. The expensive, odd looking crossbow splinters and explodes into tiny pieces of shrapnel, dealing 1d4 damage to the shooter. Fun times. 
we got together the biggest group ever to sleep over at our DM's house. Within an hour our party had entered a dungeon complex. In the first hallway I examine a large, strange looking mirror surrounded by sculpted demon faces or something. Without even a moment's thought, I announce that I'm going to try to step into the mirror. DM tells me to step into another room, then informs me that I've stepped into some hellish dimension where my character would reside for eternity. We walk back into the game room, and I grab a calculator, smiling, and begin updating my character sheet. Within seconds the entire party had jumped into the mirror. Game over. Well now the DM gets to create a new campaign where they do quests in this new hellish dimension and try to bring order to it or return home. That is certainly what a good DM would do, but a good DM tends not to put you did this thing, haha you're now 100% trapped slash dead forever things into their games. Yeah. My current DM takes Nat ones way too seriously so when a player went to examine a fake tree, the player lost his soul to the evil god we were fighting because he rolled a 1. I was DM, my so was a half-orc barbarian. They were in greenest during the dragon attack. One of the other players cast a jumping spell on him. He jumped from the tower onto the dragon's back with a nat 20, and attacked its wings with his hand axes until it landed and agreed to leave. He later got a pet black dragon who lived near the river and guarded the town in exchange for gold and free meals. We were playing a 5th edition module which had us hunting down a foreign princess who betrayed a king and murdered him. In the process of discovering who had done it, we came across her little familiar demon, who we knocked out and kept in a bag. When we finally caught up with her and her crew, she was livid that we captured her familiar. A sorcerer in our group proceeded to get her attention, pull the familiar from the bag, cut its throat, then trace the sign of his god on his forehead in its blood. Holy shit. That's a song right there. Posted this before, but it was too much fun, so I'll repeat it. I ran a campaign which had, thinly disguised, analogs to real medieval countries and religions. So we had a Christian, Muslim, and Norse paladins in the same party. Oh my Buddha was that a mess. Winking and laughing, fun, though. DM, okay, upon closer investigation the obelisk and altar appear to be some kind of shrine to a local forest god. Islamic paladin, I roll a heresy check. Rolled a two. Crap. DM, size you're not, quite sure if this is heretical. Islamic Paladin, so. There is probably no god but God, and his name is likely Allah. DM, you slept through Quran 101, okay. Norse Paladin, I do a heresy check too. Rolls 14. DM, you're a polytheist. Doctrine is to respect local gods. Heck, this shrine might be for Odin under another name. Norse Paladin, don't worry boys, this altar checks out. Christian Paladin, I wanna do a heresy check too. Natural 20. DM, groans this altar represents blackest heathen evil. Human sacrifice. Unspeakable rites. Forbidden names. You feel a sudden urge to start a crusading order and claim this land for the one true faith. Islamic Paladin, this will end well. You have been blessed by Selun, goddess of knowledge and life. Like, comment, and subscribe to never fail an intelligence role in all your adventures. Also, comment on what you want my next video to be on.